next item is discussion and possible action regarding the approval of the new lease of Chromebooks. Lou. Yes, <clears throat> I move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve a three-year lease with $1 buyout at maturity for 2,000 Lenovo Chromebooks through the PEPPM National Technology Cooperative Pricing. Anybody going to second that? No, second. do we have a second? I'm sorry, my mic was off. Okay. Do we have a second? No, I got all of you on one page. Except <laughs> <Not> me. <laughs> Michael, did Chris get back into the meeting? Chuck, I'll second that. Thank you, because I think Chris is out again. Yeah, I'm working to bring him back in. He's can you dropped hear out me? twice. Okay. Chuck, can you hear me? Anyone? Michael, do you, or Matthew, do you want, do you want to give a background, Matt? Yeah, so let's, as, as we dig into the virtual learning, if uh, you could just mute your microphones, it's down in the lower left-hand corner, and it has a microphone, and it says mute. So if you can mute your microphones, and then when one person talks, it'll make it a little more efficient, and you won't hear as much background noise. So with regard to this uh, particular motion, um, I was approached by the technology team uh, who expressed a considerable concern around the potential of not having uh, Chromebooks available for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, with the coronavirus pandemic, um, the supply of Chromebooks is dwindling rapidly, um, and we know that we have many units that are going to come off lease at the conclusion of this school year. So the um, tech team asked if we could move forward in doing the lease now so that we can get these units in advance. And then when these units come in at the conclusion of the school year, we will be able to turn in the other units and have new ones to replace those that are being turned back in. In addition to that, obviously with the coronavirus pandemic and where we are, the Chromebooks and the technology have become more important than ever before. Um, we think that with these machines, if we get them early enough, we would be able to expand out our one-to-one -one down to grade two. Right now, we're one-to-one -one in grades three through 12. Um, grades pre K, K and one, we wouldn't look to do Chromebooks at that grade level because they aren't proficient at them and haven't really used them. However, our second graders certainly have. So we've definitely got that as, as a potential. Okay, and if you wish to speak, you'll un Quite. unmute your mic. Any questions? I do. My, uh, Bobby, Mike, I have a question. What would be the earliest date we could get these Chromebooks if we purchased them? Uh, in talking with Jim DeRagan, we're looking at a, probably about three to four weeks out at this point. Oh, okay. Because we have nine weeks of school left, correct? That's what I was looking at. Okay. Michael, are we thinking that with... Um, just listening to the governor's briefing today that we actually might be able to recoup some of this cost through those initiatives with the virus? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, um, Lou. And one of the things that we've talked about among central office team uh, is to make sure that any expenditures that we currently have, we are documenting um, and looking for any type of potential reimbursement um, through FEMA. Um, obviously, you may have seen the town manager uh, yesterday uh, created a state of emergency, um, which will give the town access to uh, funding to support. So this is something that we can certainly take a look at in terms of potential reimbursement. Good, good. Did I turn Any other questions? Mike, I just had a question. How long does it take to deploy them once you get them? That's a good question. You know, when we deployed the units for grades three through six, um, those we were able to deploy out from classrooms probably within a shade over 24 hours. Now with the virus really taking hold and accelerating here in Weathersfield, um, I have to be careful in terms of maintaining the safety and health of our IT team. Um, we've already talked as a, a team about um, where they would go. They would go over to web. Currently we have obviously no activity going on at web. Um, we'd likely have a smaller crew of people there than we typically would. Um, we would need to image the machines and prepare them and load them with all of our um, software such as GoGuardian, which is a um, great tool that we use to monitor internet usage and safety. You want to make sure that these units are safe going out. So it's difficult to pinpoint an actual time as how quickly we'll be able to roll them out given our current situation. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. Thank you. Next action item, discussion and possible revision of the 2019-2020 calendar. Mr. Lesser. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we approve the revised 2019-2020 uh, school calendar as recommended by the superintendent. Second. Do we have a second? second. Bobby seconds it. Okay. Bye. Thank you. And Mr. Emmett, would you like to give us some background, please? I have plenty of discussion on this particular item. This is a, uh, a tough situation that we're in right now. Um, we have never faced a situation quite like this. And, um, you know, we're trying to balance the anxiety and the uncertainty among our uh, administrators, our teachers, our paras, our tutors, lunch aides, security, superintendent, central office, parents, community members. And we're, we're trying to find some level of continuity here. Um, we're trying to strike a balance as we move forward with this district learning plan. So what we're looking at doing here with this particular um, revision would be to try and recoup some of the days that we've lost thus far while still trying to get out at a reasonable time in June. Um, I understand, I've heard from uh, several teachers today that you know there's a stress level that's out there. Um, we recognize that. That stress level is exponential right now because we've embarked upon something that's incredibly new. The other piece for me as your superintendent is trying to strike that balance of making sure I'm giving the kids the absolute utmost that I can give them in terms of education. And you know, one of the things we looked at with regard to the April vacation was the fact that with our travel restrictions at this point in time, the ability for people to be able to freely travel or to, to, to take off and to go somewhere is extraordinarily limited. We're hopeful that in mid-June, with a June 15th end date, we're hoping that there'll be more freedom so people can get out, say, sayonara to the 2019-20 school year and, and get on with life. Michael, hold on one second. Sure. John Cassio got removed. He, he needs to rejoin. All right, I'll let him know. Thank you. And I'll see that just as, as it comes up. So uh, the, the process here is trying to meet the contractual obligations. Um, typically in our normal school year, we're looking at 182 day student year. Um, this does not meet that. It, it only gets us to 180. Um, you know, the other thing I think too that we need to look at with our distance learning plan is we recognize that our distance learning plan is, um, it's a four hour day. It's not a full day. We're looking at a minimum day schedule. So those were the factors that went into it. Now, with that being said, I understand that there are parents that are stressed and anxious. If we had a situation where we went the week of April uh, 13th, and parents needed to, to drop out for a few days and to let their kids recharge and regroup, that's certainly something that can be done. Um, the other piece too is I have contractual obligations, not only among teachers, but I have paras, I have secretaries, I have administrators. And you know, we talk with each of our unions, uh, starting with the WFT back on March 17th. And what I heard from the WFT was that they wanted to get out earlier as opposed to later in June. And we know in June what ends up happening is you've got nice, hot, humid days. The, the focus on learning goes. And with everybody being cooped up as long as we've been thus far, you're going to have parents, students, and staff that are really going to want to check out. So the idea was to try and get finished in as early in June as we possibly could, obviously maintaining the uh, June 12th date as graduation. Um, I think the other thing, too, just so we know, if – I have a situation here where we end up canceling or not canceling, we go forward with the um, April vacation. That does have impact on some of the other bargaining units that have hourly employees. Um, that's been another factor that we've had that has been extraordinarily difficult to deal with here is how do I keep every possible employee engaged and working? Um, you know, our paras and our tutors are doing unbelievable work right now supporting our students with special needs. Um, there again, the piece I've heard from many parents with regard to um, having students with special needs that definitely need routine and they need structure. 
Um, so those were some of the, the facets that went into to looking at this. Um, we did approach all unions, secretaries and paras were on board with it. Nurses were, teachers union was, and then the administrators were as well. Um, the piece with the administrators union was that there was some concern among some of the members that have accrued a lot of non-work days, being able to use those up prior to the end of June. So we'll work with them on an individual basis to address that. Thank you, Michael. Is there any questions? I have, I have a comment, Chuck. Um, yep. It's Bob. It's yeah, Bob. I know. I see it. Um, two things. Number one, um, I thought the governor had said that we did not have to keep to the mandated 182 days for school. And number two, Michael, um, have you talked to the other superintendents in the surrounding areas? as to what they're doing with their calendars? I, I have, and uh, two pieces. The governor did say we don't need to meet the, or we don't need to meet the 180 day uh, mandate. Um, our mandate by this board has always been 182, um, so we're not meeting that. We just meet, barely meet the 180. In terms of talking with other superintendents around the greater Hartford area, um, many have maintained their uh, April vacations. I would give that with a caveat. Uh, in many cases, we've had districts that started distance learning long before we did. Uh, we had kids out six days prior to the start of our distance learning. Um, districts like, for example, across the river in Glastonbury, Glastonbury started day one. Uh, Newington started before us as well. I do know there are several districts that uh, were foregoing April vacation so that they too could uh, get in extra time. I know Vernon and I believe Windsor were two districts that were going to forego uh, April vacation. And I think it's hard to compare districts because everybody's at a different place at this point in time. Uh, with district, uh, the distance learning, right. some some districts hey, are doing buddy. distance learning half day, some are doing distance learning uh, full day. So it ends up being difficult to make a direct comparison, Bobby. It's a good question. Yeah. Okay, but I, one more thing, and we are hearing from teachers and parents, as you know. I am worried about people's mental health at this time. And we are hearing that there's tremendous stress, not only in teachers and doing this new model, which I have seen and I am more than impressed with. But number two, I'm hearing that families are very stressed with the amount of work that these kids are made to do when it's new and they're trying to do it together as families. So I, I, I want all of us to consider this stressful time not just because of this pandemic, but because of the pressure we're putting on educationally. So that's why I'm looking towards having a uh, April vacation. I mean, and I totally agree with you in this stressful time, Bobby, but my thing is I'm, I'm thinking about June when it's 90 degrees out and the stress is still gonna be there, whether we're past this or not. And hopefully we're back into schools, but that doesn't look too promising. Yeah. But I've heard from I teachers who who are all for this and i know we've heard from a few parents and i i know a few parents who are all for us canceling april break so it's kind of hard to say it hasn't been a mass decision but i know michael said the teachers union approached him about this so they're the elected officials of that union so there's they're elected to speak for them right. so I have a and i did i did say there seems to be a lack of communication i would like to look into that but i didn't have time um I just, I'm worried about people's mental health. That's where I'm coming from and just being able to take time off. Some teachers are actually saying and families are saying that there's so many pieces to this pandemic on a family, taking care of older parents, taking care of little ones, taking care of the kids in school, that they would just like a break. I would like to, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? I got you, Elaine. You got me? Go ahead, Elaine. Um, I, I was approached with an idea of um, get, taking Good Friday off and the Monday after Michael, just for one a long weekend for the teachers, from the teachers. And I just don't know. I'm tossing that out to the nine of us. There, there's, I, I can't see nine of you, but... <laughs> um, is that something people want to think about or do you just want to go with the calendar? Because Michael did approach the union. 
I remember right. seeing that email and he got an answer of yes, and they represent all the teachers. Now, like Bobby, I don't think that reached down to our elementary teachers as well as it went through the high school, but we've always had that history. The union always lets everything go right through the high school and then the teachers, the elementary gets it a few days late. So I don't really know where the breakdown came from the union point of view. But yeah, some but can, people I, can are, I jump in here on that? It is I, not yes, our sir. job. It is not our job to run the union. If the union can't communicate with its no, rank agree, file Chris. effect, no, I'll finish this. If the union cannot communicate effectively, that's on the union. But when the union leadership comes to our superintendent, makes a commitment, shakes hands on it, we are duty bound to proceed, in my opinion. We cannot unrenegotiate and serve as liaisons to the union. Second, as much as I understand there is stress, and I'm not going to pretend to know what it's like to have a family because I don't have one. However, I do have friends that have kids in the school system at all ages, and there will be just as much stress if we have a, a week without any instruction or structure in these houses with these children, especially if the weather is not bad. Our parks are closed. We are restricted from uh, meeting with each other. We're giving everyone six feet notice. And I think the fact that the school district has done a remarkable job getting this up and running to now break and then pick it up again is not doing a service to our students. They're doing four hours of work. They can handle it. This is a unique situation. I don't think, I think we'd be doing a huge disservice if for one second now we're having second doubts because a few teachers didn't get the memo. I'm sorry they didn't get the memo, but their leadership came to us and said, this is what we want. So how are we supposed to run up a school district if they come and tell us what we want? And then at the moment of truth, we say, oh, wait a minute. We didn't, we didn't have, we had a communication problem. I'm sorry, but I, I, I feel very strongly that we need to adopt this, move on, keep working the way we're working, support our school district. And if we have to make adjustments during the school day, if kids can't need a break. Well, we can adjust that. Certainly we do that all the time with kids that are, that are not able to comply with the day's workload. Are we not? I mean, am I missing something here? May I speak? Can everybody hear me? I can't see me, but can you hear me? I can't see you, John. We can hear you, John. You can hear me. Okay. Yes, John, go ahead. When that handshake was done with the superintendent of schools, this was prior to all of what has been going down in the state of Connecticut. We are, haven't even seen the beginning. I can rest assured if you were to go back to the table with the union reps and ask them the same question, their answer would be different today. So before we move forward, I think we have to look at it. That's conjecture, John. I'm sorry. That's conjecture. Okay. Well, you know what, Chris, you had the microphone. Now you can sit back in your country scene and just listen to what we're doing. Allow me to speak. I allowed you to speak. Go ahead. I'm just sharing what you did. Now allow me to speak. And I'm speaking. So I do not support the calendar. Thank you. Mr. Emmett, did you not meet with the union today and again last week we, about this? Mrs. DeStoli and Mr. Donahue have met with the teachers union on a weekly basis, most recently today. Um, I certainly heard today from my synopsis from Mrs. DeStoli that the stress level is definitely there. Um, I don't doubt that. I think that's what I led my discussion with. The stress level is there for everybody. Um, I think this is difficult because we're trying to strike a balance in uncharted times. And I can see both sides of it because I've heard from parents on both sides. So at the, at the end of the day, when I look at this, I have to make the decision that I think is in the best interest of the kids of Weathersfield. As I said earlier, if there are parents that feel that their kids need to go offline, then you need to take them offline. If we need to make adjustments to instruction, as I said today, I did a video clip for Blue Eagle News for tomorrow, and I talked about the fact that we are learning on a daily basis, all of us, adults, as well as our students and our families. And I know there are families who are stressed out and want to decompress for the week, and there are other families that are desperate to have the continuity for their kids. That's w where I'm at on this. And yes, this continues to move in a hundred different directions. We still wait to find out if we're going to come back to school anytime the rest of this year. So, Michael, yes, Michael. sir. Yeah, first of all, thank you for the amazing job you've done. It's just been fantastic. And we're all so appreciative. And their whole staff, Matt and everybody, and obviously the teachers too. So, a big thank you. 
What about the feasibility of Elaine's idea, which was, or the one in, I've heard from both sides, and I've also heard that idea from people of uh, giving them one extra day. In other words, having, obviously we have Good Friday off, but having Monday off as well, and then continue um, the rest of the way as proposed. Is that an adjustment we can make? And what are your thoughts on that? I, I, I would have no issue. I think that strikes a balance. Um, it's on the, the backside of a holiday. I would certainly be amenable to that. It drops us down to 179 days. Um, but I think that might be a good, um, good way to come up with a compromise here. Again, I think it's important to understand, though, that we want to develop this level of continuity. And this is something that we heard they, the union was interested in doing. Uh, we were interested in it as well because it's best for kids. But I'd certainly be amenable if this board feels it appropriate to add an additional day. Again, I, I take my direction from the board at this point in time. So. Yeah. But I guess my question, Michael, was in these last two weeks of meetings with the union in which they knew you were going to bring this calendar adoption to the board, they have not mentioned to you that they have now changed their mind and no longer see that it's prudent to teach during April break? No, I, I didn't hear that from leadership today, no. And they've had plenty of opportunities to discuss that with you in these weekly meetings. Well, you've had two weekly meetings past the original March 17th meeting. And the March 17th oh, meeting just, is where well, we, we discussed it. They're at the table every week, and it has been brought up. That's all I want to make clear. Any other discussions? Well, I, I'd like the Bobby. <clears throat> I'd like to see a balance. That's what I would like to see, because I'm hearing of this tremendous stress and teachers putting in a lot of hours to get these lessons out, which are uh, which I find to be incredible, and I like the education that is continuing, but I do see we are in a very unusual time, and I think we need to strike a balance for families and teachers. It's Ken. I would like to see just the Monday off and give them a long weekend and then proceed. It's just one one additional day, so that seems like a, a compromise to me, but it's, it's only one extra day. And All right. That's what the group feels about that. So we're going to we're going to test my Robert's rules here. So we have a motion to cancel all of April vacation and have the last day on June 15th. Ken, are you making a motion to amend your motion so that we have the Monday, April? Let me look at my 14th. calendar. 14th. Monday, no. April 14th. No, no April 13th. 13th. It's the 13th. 13th. Are you amending your motion so that the school is closed on Monday, April 13th? and be in session for the next four days and then to still end on June 16th. June June 15th, the same 15th. end date. And yes, I am amending my motion to have the Monday off. Okay, Bobby, do you second? I second that. Okay, is there any further discussion on that? I think that's a great comp I think that's a great compromise, guys. I think that's great working together. And I, I think that would the teachers and the parents Mike, I have a question that, uh, not on this motion. I'm sorry, Chuck. Hold oh, on, we can't have a Okay, I, can, I know the rules. Go to the, I know the motion the rules first. Sorry. Chuck, I'll just yeah, say, it. it looks like Hold John on. has dropped her off again, just so you know. Yeah, I know. All right. I can't. All right. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Motion passes. All right. And I will adjourn the meeting. It is 6.25 p.m. Okay, can I make a board comment? Hold it. Can I make no, a there's no board comment, Elaine. This is a public oh, meeting. Okay. But we always you have can, public meetings. Not, not in special meetings. Okay. All right. Okay. The, the meeting is adjourned. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? All right. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, have John. a good evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.